A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to take a look at a so-called extreme value problem. In one of my recent videos, this one right here, I covered in the first exercise an extreme value problem and you guys really, really liked it. And I thought, why not create more of those? In fact, extreme value problems are one of my most favorite type of problems ever. I loved it since I did my Fachabitur and I love it to this day. And they are fun to design and really fun to solve. And you should most definitely check out the new videos, which I'm going to post one after another, which are going to cover some famous extreme value problems ranging from the optimal can, so the perfect can, for example, to store tomatoes in up until the brick is to crone. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for those. And we are going to start today with the perfect can. Does it exist? Is there a way to optimize a can in such a way, meaning a cylinder, such that you have minimal surface area, or in other words, minimal amount of material to use with the highest volume possible? Let's find out mathematically. By the way, this video has been supported by you guys over on Patreon. If you want to help keep the channel alive, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It means a lot to me and it's one of the only ways I can still keep producing those videos. So definitely make sure to support the channel, link down in the description and now we are going to dive right in. So let us take a look at the cylinder at first. So what is a cylinder? It's basically just a stretched disc you could say. Okay, it's a disc with volume. And what are the two main characteristics which make up a cylinder? Well, it's its height, h, and also its radius or diameter. We are going to go with the radius here because it's more standardized. Okay, and once again, think back what the original question was. Can we optimize the cylinder right here in such a way that it has a maximum amount of volume but a minimum amount of surface area. Meaning at first we need to construct ourselves a function for the surface area and then we are going to minimize it. At least we are going to try to do so. So what is the surface area of a cylinder? Well the surface area of a cylinder is comprised of its mantle and also those two discs that we got right here. Those two discs are very easy to find out the area of. Well, those are just pi r squared for the area of a circle, but two times. So we are going to get two pi r squared. And now what is the mental area right here of our cylinder? Well, maybe I have a piece of paper right here because this is actually going to demonstrate it very nicely. This is how I do it with, with my students. Take a look at that rectangle. And now I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to roll it up. And magically, it turns into a freaking cylinder. Isn't that amazing? Now, this right here is the mantle area. And if you roll it up once again, what we have is just the area of a rectangle, which is height times the base, basically. So the height is h in our case. So we have something plus h. And what is the base length? Well, the base length, think back, has been just the circumference of a circle. And we know a few things about the circle, namely that it has a radius of r. And what is the formula for the circumference of a circle? Well, 2 pi r. So we are going to get 2 pi r times h as being the area of the mantle, the rectangular area around those discs. This right here is our surface area. You can find it in each and every um, table of formulas, obviously, but it's very easy to derive. I love to derive stuff here on this channel. Now, the bad thing about this right here is that it's still a multivariable function with respect to the radius r and also our height h. And this is where the beauty of extreme value problems comes in. Namely, what we can do is we can construct ourselves another function which plays a role inside of the cylinder right here for example and then we can substitute some stuff in. And think back to what I said at the beginning, we want to have a maximum volume. So we want to take a look at the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a cylinder is, think back, it's just the 
disk but stretched in a certain height. This is where the disk method for integration comes in. So we just take the area of the circle, pi r squared, and then we are going to stretch it up by the height h. Okay, and now we can solve this for one of the two variables, r or h, and then substitute it into here. And the obvious choice is to substitute for h because we only got one h up here and substituting everything for r or r squared is going to turn into kind of a messy. You can do so, you can obviously do so, but this is not the route you should go. You should always substitute the easier thing. So let us solve this for h, meaning h in our case is going to be v divided by pi r squared, where r is not equal to zero because otherwise you wouldn't have a cylinder, obviously. And now we can plug this bit into here and see what we are going to get. And now our surface area is a function with respect to r purely. This is so beautiful. I love extreme value problems. So this is going to turn into 2 pi r squared plus, and now we are going to get 2 pi times r times h. Pi and pi is going to cancel out. So 2 times we are going to get the volume v. The, the volume can be arbitrary 0.5 liters, for example, 0.33 liters or whatever you want. Um, and then 1 divided by uh, r and r squared is going to cancel out to 1 divided by r. And now we want to minimize this function with respect to r, meaning we need to take the first derivative and we need to search for the zero of this first derivative because this is where we are going to find either maximum or minimum locally. Meaning if we take the derivative of the surface area function, we are going to get, this right here is easy, we are going to get 4 pi r plus and the derivative of 1 over r, because this is r to negative 1 power, the negative 1 is going to be dragged to the front, 2v, and r to negative 1 is going to turn into r to negative 2, which is the same as 1 over r squared. And now we want to search for the zeros of this derivative. And this just means that our um, slope is equal to um, 0 on the original function, obviously, meaning it's in extreme point in some kind of way. And now think back, r is not equal to zero because there would be a shitty cylinder. It wouldn't work out that way. So we can multiply both sides by r squared, for example, such that we get rid of this ugly fraction right here. Meaning overall, what we are going to get is that four pa times r cubed minus two v is equal to zero. We can bring the two v to the other side. So that's equal to two v. Then divide both sides by four pa. So we're going to get r to the third power is equal to 2v divided by 4 pa is going to turn into v divided by 2 pa. And then we are going to take the further root right here, meaning our r is going to be equal to the third root of the volume divided by 2 pa. That's an ugly radius, <laughs> but it does work out that way. And now what we are going to do is we are going to see if this value for r actually minimizes our function. So what are we going to do? We are going to take the second derivative, plug it in and see if it's greater than zero. Meaning the second derivative of our surface area function with respect to r is going to be 4 pa. And then r to the negative 2, same procedure as before, we are going to track a negative 2 to the front, so plus 4v. And then we are going to reduce the exponent by 1, so 1 over r to the third power. And now we are going to notice something. r obviously is a positive value. The, the volume is positive, so this radicand right here is positive. Third rule overall is a positive value. Now we have 4 power, which is positive, And what we get right here is adding something positive to it, where r cubed is also going to be positive if we cube this thing, because r cubed is um, v divided by 2 pa, meaning overall this whole thing is going to be greater than 0 overall, meaning this is going to correspond to a local minimum in some kind of way. Meaning our surface area, which we have right here, of the cylinder is going to be minimized if our radius is exactly the third root of v divided by 2 pa. And as a manufacturer of, for example, tomato cans, what you want to know now is, okay, you got a radius, but what is the height going to be? And the cool thing about extreme value problems is that we already substituted h for something, namely this right here is the expression for h. Let us plug our first root of blah, blah, blah into here and see what we are going to get. The height is going to be v divided by pa. 
and then we are going to get one over r squared. So this is um, r squared, it's this expression right here. So we are going to square our third root. The root is multiplicative if um, this right here is positive. So we are going to get v squared divided by four pi squared. And one over this whole thing is gonna be the reciprocal. So we are going to get the third root of four pi squared divided by v squared. And now we can play around with this expression a tiny little bit more to turn it into something nicer. So we can take the third root of this part right here and cube what we got here. So we are going to get the third root of what we have here, but cubed. And now we can bring both together using the multiplicative property. So h overall is gonna be equal to um, v cubed and the v squared is gonna cancel out. Pa cubed and pa squared is gonna cancel out giving us overall the third root of um, 4v divided by pa. Yes, exactly. And this right here is our height. And do you know what the cool thing about uh, this right here is? Let us take a look at the regular expression for our r once again. This right here was the regular expression. and. Remember what the diameter is? The diameter is just two times the radius. So this right here is also um, the diameter divided by two. So we can multiply both sides by two here, giving us that the diameter is two times the cube root of v divided by two pi. And now we can use the same trick as we did up here. Namely, we are going to take two to the third power, but the third root of that. And if we now bring this into here, what we are going to get is two cubed and two is gonna cancel out to two squared, which is four, which is gonna turn into the diameter being equal to the further root of four V divided by pa. Meaning we are going to get the perfect tomato can if we have the height being equal to the diameter of our can where the diameter is being defined as the cube root of 4v divided by pa. And since pa is basically equal to 4, we are going to get the cube root of v overall. And now you can plug some shitty values in and see what you are going to get. For example, for 300 milliliters, for example. And then you are going to get your corresponding values out. And I think that this is absolutely beautiful. And this is why I love extreme value problems, because it's just a beautiful mathematically awesome procedure. It has a nice foundation in calculus and I just love it. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more calculus analysis problems like this, then the contents of today's sponsor Brian might be the perfect fit for you. Now back when I was a student, we also solved extreme value problems. And sometimes those differentials were extremely convoluted. Finding the zeros of those was extremely hard and we needed to use approximations like the Newton method or we were using graphic calculators to kind of approximate the zero of the derivative functions. And this was a nice method because this way if you didn't have um, like generalized values but distinct values for the volume for example, this gave you a nice approximation that you could use for further calculations. And this is the beauty of using visualizations and also graphs when doing problems like these or any other kind of problem in calculus and also physics and chemistry and the like. And this is where Brilliant comes in and their amazing content because Brilliant is one of the best online learning platforms out there on the internet where you can learn something new on a daily basis in every STEM field that you can quite possibly think of. Be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, no matter what it is you want to learn today in the STEM field, Brian definitely got something up their sleeve for you that you can use to further expand your knowledge in a certain field. And those right here are seriously good examples for what Brian is delivering to their users. What they love to do is they use visualizations and also graphics that you can play around with. Like you can try to solve a problem like this with the can, but in a completely empirical and also heuristic manner. By playing around, for example, with a visualization where you can expand the diameter and also the height up until you find, for example, numerical values where you get a maximization of the volume or minimization of the surface area. 
And Brian does this all the time. It doesn't matter if you do stochastics or linear algebra, maybe you do general relativity or quantum mechanics. They use those visualizations in such a way that you can learn something concretely in a very playful manner. It's just hard to explain how good their learning concept is. You should try it out firsthand by using my link at the top of the description, brain.org slash maps, or you can make use of the QR code up here. With it, you are going to get a 30 day free trial of awesomeness. Try out the whole landscape of Brain for completely free. And if you think like this could turn into a long term relationship between you and Brian, then definitely make sure to make complete use of the link and the first 200 people to do so get 20% of an inner premium subscription, which is an amazing deal. They are adding so much content on a regular basis and they already have so much content available that you are never going to virtually run out of educational um, courses that you can try out over there. So definitely make sure to give it a shot and support the channel this way massively. And I thank guys for watching. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, why not subscribe or also support the channel on Patreon. And this concludes today's video and stay tuned for the next ones in this mini series, you could say on extreme value problems. I thank you guys for watching and until the next video, I wish you guys a flamboyant day. See ya.